Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to dissect an owl pellet. Pellets can be bought online or you may find them under spots where owls often roost, for example under large trees or in old barns. So first of all, what is an owl pellet? Many people think that pellets are poo, but this is not the case. Owls swallow their prey whole, then cough up any bits that they can't digest in the form of a pellet. So pellets consist of a compacted ball of fur and bones, usually from about three or four animals that the owl has eaten that night. They don't smell and are usually quite dry to the touch, although if you're lucky enough to find a fresh one, it might still be slightly damp. All species of owl produce pellets, but the ones you're most likely to find and the one I'll be dissecting in this video are barn owl pellets. You don't need much equipment to dissect an owl pellet, but there are a few things you might find helpful. So mounted needles can help you to remove some of the fluff, particularly from inside skulls. I'll be using these two from a dissection kit, but you can easily make your own by pushing pins into a couple of corks. You might also find a pair of tweezers handy for picking up really tiny bones. And finally, a magnifying glass will help you to see the really fine detail of the bones, which might also help with identification. I like to start the dissection by just breaking up the owl pellet by hand into several smaller chunks which are a bit easier to deal with. Be very gentle doing this, the bones are very fragile and you don't want to squash them. If the pellet is very hard, you might want to soak it in water before you start dissecting which can help to loosen it up a little bit. As you can see, I've already had my first bone fall out of the pellet. So I'm just going to show you here how I would go about cleaning a skull from an owl pellet. As you can see, I'm very gently teasing away that fur that's compacted around it. Again, you can use some water to soften the fur a little bit if you need to here. Take your time with this, don't rush. The bones are fragile and you don't want to rush and end up damaging them. Often you'll find the fur is all that's holding the upper jaw and the lower jaw together, so as you clean it away the two will become separated, as mine did here. That's totally normal, don't worry about it. So what you're aiming to end up with is a nice clean skull with no fur left on it. Now you can go ahead and dissect the rest of your pellet. So just take each piece between your fingers and feel for any hard bits. When you find one, start teasing the fur away to reveal the bone. Put any bones that you find to one side to identify later and you can discard the fluff. Once you've got all of the bones out of the pellet, you can start identifying them. I recommend putting the bones on a piece of white paper so that you can see them clearly and you can also write what each is once you've identified it. If you want to identify what your owl has been eating, the best place to start is with the skulls. The most likely animals you'll find in a pellet are voles, mice and shrews, so we'll have a look at how to identify each of those. Voles and mice are both rodents, meaning that they gnaw their food, so they have quite similar jaws. As you can see, there's a big gap between the long front tooth and the teeth further back in the mouth. Shrews, on the other hand, are insectivores and they chew their food, so they have quite different teeth. As you can see, there's no gap between the front and the back teeth, so if you see this, it's quite likely that you're looking at a shrew. If you decide you have a rodent skull, you'll need to take a closer look at the teeth to work out what species it is. Use your tweezers to gently pull out a tooth from the back of the jawbone and take a closer look at it using your magnifying glass. Field vole teeth have grooves that run all the way from one end of the tooth to the other and have no obvious root to the tooth. Bank voles, on the other hand, have grooves that only run part of the way down the tooth and have two clear roots. Mice teeth are much smaller and look like miniature human teeth. They're rounded, cusped and have two clear roots. Now we'll take a look at some of the other bones that you'll find in your pellet. Here we have the back leg bones. The two on the left are thigh bones and the two on the right are lower leg bones. And here are some front leg bones. The two on the left are upper arm bones and the other two are the lower arm bones. 
Another large bone you're likely to come across is the hip bone. If you take one of your thigh bones, you'll see there's a small ball on one end that fits exactly into the socket on the hip bone, and that's what allows the leg to move. This wide flat bone is the shoulder blade. And these thin bendy ones are ribs. You'll likely end up with a lot of different shaped small knobbly bones. These are the back bones or vertebrae. Once you've identified all of your bones, why not stick them to a piece of paper with some sellotape to create your own ID guide? And of course, don't forget to wash your hands when you've finished dissecting your owl pellet.